Hi guys, my name is Marie and welcome to my Kawaii World. In this video, I'm going to share with you 10 things that you should eat when you go to Jeju Island. Whenever I travel somewhere, I try to eat food that quintessentially represents the place I'm visiting. I believe that every place has its special regional food. Some things you can only eat at a specific place and it makes that whole food experience really special. When I looked up what to eat on Jeju Island, I saw black pork, black pork, and more black pork. And to be honest, I was kind of not exactly looking forward to it because I'm not a big pork eater. Do you want to know how you can tell you're eating black pork? Look closely at your meat to see if you can find a little black hair on it. If it's really black pork, there should be black hair on the meat, and the hair is left there to prove to you that you are indeed eating black pigs. These pigs are local to Jeju-do, and they were initially kept to help dispose of human waste, so they were housed in sites outside of outhouses or toilets. Nowadays, they are fed in more conventional ways. So I was definitely willing to try the pork, but I didn't want to eat it for every meal. So in this video, let's try to go beyond black pigs and see what else there is to eat on Jeju Island. So for our first meal, we ate at the hotel because we got in really late and I ended up getting the abalone rice porridge or jungbukjuk, which is a Jeju Island specialty. Rice porridge is something that Koreans typically eat when they're sick and abalone adds a luxurious touch to the porridge. It's really hearty and it's filling and it's good for kids because it's not spicy. Abalone is considered a luxury food in Korean cuisine and it's still a highly prized item by Jeju's female divers called Henyo. Today, I think that Korea's high demand for abalone is mostly met through farmed abalone. Um, and it seems like abalone is served with just about everything on Jeju Island. I really like the abalone porridge, so I ate a lot of it while I was there. The next Jeju Island specialty that we found is karchi. karchi. This is a hair tail fish that's really long and silver, and it's local to Jeju. Uh, it doesn't preserve well, so it's best to eat it fresh when you come to Jeju Island. It's really popular in a spicy stew, but I actually prefer it grilled. It comes with a really fancy elaborate meal with lots of side dishes like abalone, cheese dok, and a whole bunch of other stuff. We ordered this set meal for two, but it actually seems like it could feed three or four fully grown adults. This was probably the best Korean meal that I had on Jeju Island, and I'd definitely recommend this restaurant. When you're done eating, you can go next door and get a free peanut or tangerine ice cream or coffee or tea and enjoy it outside in a light up Cinderella carriage. Next, we have Jeju style kimbap. I bet you've never seen this before. My husband found this place while we were in Soguipo and I knew that I'd like it when I saw the adorable mascots in the building. This abalone kimbap reminds me a lot of Hawaiian spam musubi and it looks nothing like the traditional Korean kimbap. The rice is seasoned with abalone and in the center there's a jello-y egg omelet. Jeju has some influence from Japan so I think you can really see it in this kimbap. This restaurant also serves rice that's topped with abalone and I think this makes a really good takeout meal to eat on the beach. Another thing that's famous on Jeju Island is seafood hot pot or hemu tukbegi. This is a simple bowl of steamed seafood and here we have shrimp, clams, abalone, probably some octopus, squid, and other things. My husband ordered this while the kids and I shared an abalone porridge. We're in the restaurant and we're eating and then... Raw seafood. In Korea, you'll find a special type of raw seafood meal that's different from Japanese sashimi. I ate a raw seafood meal in Busan as well as in Seoul, and they're all a little bit different. Here on Jeju, they have their own style of raw seafood, and the standout item was really the live abalone. Look, I've eaten live octopus that was still moving on the plate before, but they served us a whole abalone that was trying to escape off of its shell. Mom, this is like leaving the 
shell. Huh? This is so crazy. Mommy was living the shell. The abalone is coming out of his shell. Maybe spread um, a little bit sauce on it so it will fit. No. I don't think so. This is so wild. Okay. But one thing to eat that first and the baby will die and never move. Wait, he's coming out of his shell. <laughs> They also served a different type of raw shrimp that I've never seen before and kimbap which had what looked like a whole mackerel inside. This was a really interesting experience and they served a set meal so it came with a lot of side dishes and extras. Muhui. This is a cold spicy seafood soup. The fish is all raw and it sounds and looks really unappetizing but it's surprisingly good and really refreshing. We had this at a henyo cheap or a restaurant that's run by female divers. They sell the seafood that they catch here and I was pretty much obsessed with the henyo divers while I was on Jeju Island so I was really excited to eat at this henyo cheap. It had a really informal and homey feel to it. Sea urchin seaweed soup. Seaweed soup is a really popular dish in Korea and it's one of those staple foods that's eaten all the time. On Jeju, they put a little twist on the seaweed soup by adding sea urchin. I've never had cooked sea urchin before. Usually, I eat it raw on top of sushi, but when it's cooked, it turns brown and it takes on a really irony flavor. I actually prefer regular seaweed soup, but if you like to try new things, then definitely give this a try. Jeju Island is the only place that I've seen this soup. Kogi guksu or meat noodles are one of the traditional foods served on Jeju Island. Because of the poor soil quality, people traditionally lived off of wheat and barley, so a noodle culture developed on the island. Also, there's a tradition of giving gifts of pork on special occasions, so this soup was born out of those two cultural elements. The restaurant that we went to is famous because they make their own noodles and they're really chewy and good. We ordered a set of food that came with a lot of side dishes, including this small buckwheat crepe, which was really good. I also got to try Jeju's famous black pork, and it was served as a side dish to the meal. Tangerines. You'll find dozens of tangerine groves as you drive through Jeju Island. It just seems like they're everywhere. And Jeju is known for its tangerines. Uh, if you come during winter, make sure you try the halibong tangerines, which look like oranges that have a protruding navel. But in the meantime, you can enjoy halibong juice anytime at the typical tourist stop. All the souvenirs on Jeju Island include some sort of tangerine, whether it's a tangerine flavored chocolate or a rice crisp or dry tangerines covered in chocolate. I spent a lot of time picking out what to get as a souvenir, but when I went back to Seoul, I noticed that they sold just about all of these things at E-Mart. Starbucks! I know what you're thinking. You're probably saying, why are you going to Starbucks in a foreign country? But for some reason, Starbucks on Jeju has its own special line of foods and I had to try every single one. Peanut biscotti, black basalt rusk, a black croissant, green tea tiramisu, a black basalt carrot cake. I tried just about everything and each time I was underwhelmed. I didn't really like any of these things to be honest, but you know what? It was so worth trying. I just can't say no to Jeju exclusive desserts and merchandise. When I traveled before I had kids, I always had a to-do list. I would try and hit up all of the major landmarks and check everything off of my list. Now that I have kids, we take things at a slower pace and I think I actually enjoy it more. For us, it's more about experiencing something new together and making memories and a part of that is the experience of trying new foods together and eating together. The next time my kids eat abalone, I hope that they will remember that live abalone that tried to escape off of our plate. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. 
And if you found this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And I'll talk to you next time. Bye. Bye.